check, check, check. Good morning. We welcome all parishioners and visitors as we prepare to celebrate the 17th Sunday in Ordinary Time. The parish barbecue will take place on Sunday, August 11th, following the 12 noon Mass. Please see the form in the church foyer and place your food order by this Thursday, August 1st, to allow us time to purchase enough food. We are looking for students to help out with games and face painting at the parish barbecue. This is a good chance to start building your community service hours for school. Please contact the parish office. Our celebrant today is Father Rico. Please stand and join in our processional hymn.
name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My brothers and sisters, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. As we join at this table of plenty, Jesus welcomes us with open arms. On this, the Lord's Day, this Mass, we pray in a special way for the repose of the soul of Tony Passero and the special intention for the Digba family. I invite all our special friends to come forward for our children's liturgy. Come on down, friends. Friends, I want you to turn and look at this window. What do you see in this window? The first one, the big one. Tell me what you see. We see a light. Okay, great. What do you see in the window? Let me be more specific in my question. What do you see in the window? Jesus, great start. What else do you see? Just look and tell me what you see. Am I speaking English today? Fantastic. You see bread. What else do you see? Fish. What else do you see? Trees. Great. Look a little lower. People. What do you think they're asking Jesus for? Food. Do you think Jesus said, ah, too busy? No. No. He always gives. And the word I want us to listen to is the word abundance. Abundance means God gives a lot. More than we need. Jesus always does that for us. And so that's the theme of the scriptures. So let's open our eyes and our hearts and our ears and our minds to God who gives in abundance. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Follow Miss Rebecca. She's our leader today. Darcy's our leader today now. Follow Darcy. God continues to give an abundance for the times we've pushed him away because we are selfish. We've chosen sin over his love. We bow our heads and ask for his mercy. For God is slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You are happy to die on the cross to free us from our sin. Christ, have mercy. You feed us with word and sacrament. Lord have, Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sin and bring us to everlasting life.
Let us pray. O God, protector of those who hope in you, without whom nothing has firm foundation and nothing is holy, bestow in abundance your mercy upon us and grant that with you as our ruler and guide, we may use the good things that pass in such a way as to hold fast even now to those that ever endure. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the second book of Kings. A man came bringing food from the first fruits to Elisha, the man of God, twenty loaves of barley and fresh ears of grain in his sack. Elisha said, Give it to the people and let them eat. But his servants said, How can I set this before a hundred people? So Elisha repeated, Give it to the people and let them eat. For thus says the Lord, They shall eat and have some left. The servant set it before them. They ate and had some left, according to the word of the Lord. The word of the Lord. reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, I, the prisoner in the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, making every effort to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit just as you are called to the one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in all. The word of the Lord.
be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus went to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, also called the Sea of Tiberias. A large crowd kept following him because they saw the signs that he was doing for the sick. Jesus went up the mountain and sat down there with his disciples. Now the Passover, the festival of the Jews, was near. When he looked up and saw a large crowd coming toward him, Jesus said to Philip, Where are we to buy bread for the people to eat? He said this to test him, for he himself knew what he was going to do. Philip answered him, Six months' wages would not buy enough bread for each of them to just get a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to Jesus, There is a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish, but what are they among so many people? Jesus said, Make the people sit down. Now there was a great deal of grass in the place, so they sat down, about five thousand in all. Then Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to those who were seated. So also the fish, as much as they wanted. When they were satisfied, he told his disciples, Gather up the fragments left over, so that nothing may be lost. So they gathered them up, and from the fragments of the five barley loaves left by those who had eaten, they filled twelve baskets. When the people saw the sign that he had done, they began to say, This is indeed the prophet who was to come into the world. When Jesus realized that they were about to come and take him by force to make him king, he withdrew again to the mountain by himself. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. A God of abundance who makes miracles are the themes of the scriptures. When you hear the word abundance, Matt, 1030 Mass, what do you think of abundance? Plentiful. Plentiful? Elizabeth, what did you say? Plentiful times two, good answer. Above and beyond. Above the minimum? Above and beyond. Above and beyond, sorry. I'm still dealing with the ear infection, so repeating is important, especially today for me, okay? Pardon? Lots. Lots, Christine? Yeah. More than you can possibly imagine. That sounds like God to me. Introverts, what does the word abundance mean to you? Full? Selfless? Surplus? 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 I can't wait till I'm really deaf, eh? This sucks all week. Like, I'm 42. I can't hear. (laughs) Pardon? Never ending? Somebody else says something over here. Infinity? More than is needed? Marie? Yeah, I got it. Abundance. Sally, I got you. Keep going. God's tremendous goodness. What, Millie? Plenty. Plenty. Yeah, we got that one. You're so awesome. That's great. I didn't hear cheap. I didn't hear minimum. Did you? Yeah, because you can hear, right? Yeah. I didn't hear... Inconvenience. I didn't. Pardon? What did he say? I want to hear it. What did you say? Countless and eternal? Fantastic. Countless and eternal. That's so great. Okay, you guys are so great. This homily is never going to end. What was the answer? (laughs) Overflowing. Okay, Father Rico's turn. This is great. You guys are so great. 
So, when we think about God, we don't hear any negative definitions. God gives in abundance because he expects us to do the same as well. A God who gives. Notice in the scriptures, God doesn't tell us to take. He tells us to receive. So when we think about God's love, we aren't to take, we're to receive. There's a very big difference between taking and receiving. God wants to give, and God gives in abundance. But he doesn't ask us to take. He asks us to be open to receive. He is the giver who gives the gift. We are to receive it. So all of you come forward for communion and you're the grabbers and the snatchers, don't grab the Eucharist. You are to receive it on our hands or on our tongue. We are to receive. We receive God's grace. We receive God's love. We receive God's mercy. We're to receive. God invites us to this sacred altar at this holy mass. Jesus, our host, draws us in so we are more aware of the abundance of his mercy, love, and grace. The story of the fish and the loaves, which is our window, we can reflect upon it every day, is a mere reflection of God's abundance, especially within the liturgy. He deserves our praise. That is why we come to Mass first. And not only do we give him our praise, but we receive, we are fed. If you weren't hungry coming into Mass, you're certainly going to be hungry because this week and in the weeks ahead, the Scriptures invite us to a deeper understanding of Jesus in the Eucharist. But first we have to focus on the abundance that God gives and the miracles that he gives. Because at every single Mass, bread and wine are transformed into his body and blood. These words are not historic, but they are his word. They give life. Their meaning is just as significant in 2024 at its original setting. That's a God who gives in abundance. Now, because God gives in abundance, he calls us to also give in abundance. We are not to be cheap. We are not to only give when it's convenient. We, too, need to reflect because God is so abundantly in giving to me that I need to be that same way in giving to others. We are, as St. Paul reminds us, to be a reflection of God. Now, we think easily of the passage in our window, but how about that first reading from Kings? Because it's not just when Jesus showed up that God all of a sudden was an abundant God. And the passage from First, uh, second, sorry, Second Kings, I apologize. Elisha is encouraging the people because they are to give out of the tithe. It's from the first. You give 10% to God, which is his due, and then allow God to work. When we give him our scraps, is there any reason as to why God would give us scraps in return? We are ripping him off when we don't give him what he asks for. God does not need even our praise. Yet in the Eucharistic prayer it says, even our praise, O Lord, is itself your gift. Since our praises add nothing to your greatness, but profit us for salvation. So we are always receiving. But God wants us to give with a sincere heart. And sometimes we need to learn the hard way. Let's pick on your pastor who had to learn the hard way. Some of you know the story, some of you don't. First time I was in uh, Assisi. Everybody, oh, Assisi, it's so great, it's so great. So I did my good deed for the day. I ran around and I bought Cheryl, who was starting a mother house for unwed mothers and people in troubled pregnancies in the Diocese of Buffalo. And she was setting up a chapel called the Mother Teresa Chapel. So I said, let me do the talking, because as a priest, I'll get you a better deal. So I said, everybody else go away and let me do my thing. So I went and got her a great deal for the chalice. So I bought the chalice. I was so proud of myself. Look how great Father Rico is. So then I thought, Father Rico's really hungry as I'm looking at these vines thinking, I need to drink from the fruit of the vine. So I walked into this restaurant and the Italian owner says, Padre, Padre, what can I get you? An Italian, of course. I said, do you sell wine at this restaurant? 
He looked at me like I had three heads. We are in Tuscany, Father Rico. <laughs> you know, I said, oh, I know, that's why. But I'm on a budget. So here's my budget. What's the best wine you can give me for this dollar amount? I'll get it for you. I'll get it for you. Then he said, what do you like to eat? I said, oh, my favorite thing is barbecue lamb. Padre, I got what you need. He brought out four beautiful pieces of barbecue lamb for 15 euros. It was the best meal I ever had in my life. I looked up to Jesus and I said, Lord, if this is my last supper, just before you call me home, let me finish it, please, because this is going to be so fantastic. So I'm enjoying the meal. I'm enjoying the meal. And then all of a sudden, of course, Father Rico, Father Rico, Father Rico. Hey, everyone. How are you? You found me. How wonderful. Father Rico, can we come and eat with you? Sure, come on up. You know, but in my head, I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. I just need 10 minutes to enjoy this meal in peace and pace. But I couldn't. So they come up, Father Rico, Father Rico, can we have some of that? And I looked at the 25 friends and those four pieces of lamb, and I'm like, they're all going to enjoy this, and I'm going to get nothing left. So like the apostles, respectfully, I said, no, thank you, but you can order it on the menu if you'd like, right? So they ordered and they enjoyed and all that, and I felt bad. I went to confession about it and made peace with God. So three years later, as I take the next group on the pilgrimage from the parish, including my parents, I take them to the restaurant where I had the vast barbecue lamb. And I told them, order from the menu. You can order it yourself. So they took everybody's order. Then they get to your pastor. Padre, would you like your barbecue lamb? I said, you remember? I was here th three years ago. Oh, Father, we remember you. Oh, fantastic, I said. Well, I've got bad news. We ran out of lamb. <laughs> and I thought to myself, this is God punishing me because the first time I was here, I was selfish. I thought, good, I deserve it. I said, okay. So then my mother, of course, my mother's a saint. R Rico, I'll give you the lamb. I said, no, Mom, I brought you from Canada to Italy. You're enjoying the lamb. So then my dad said, I'll give you the lamb. I said, no chance. You're enjoying it too. So the owner says, Father, I'll be right back. I'm going to go up the road, and I'm going to get you some lamb and make it for you. I said, no, no, no. Don't do that for me. Look, the friends are all here. Everybody's happy. When everybody's happy, Father Rico's happy, right? He brought me the lamb. I sat there, and I thought, yes, right? But I learned the hard way. I didn't deserve the lamb the first time or the second time because I'm like the apostle sometimes. I'm cheap. I have limits, and I love you, but obviously I don't love you as much as I should, right? Are you like me sometimes, a little hard-headed? We hoard things, especially our time, stuff we have. Got to make sure I have enough. If it's convenient for me, I'll help. If it's not convenient, if I'm annoyed, Father Rico, Father Rico, leave me alone, right? Want to be left alone. Is that what God does to us? Does he say to us, leave me alone, Rico? I'm too busy serving the other 7 billion people right now for your little annoying prayer. It's not how God is. God gives an abundance. And he expects us to be the same. So are we going to learn the hard way like your pastor? Or are we going to learn the way that God wants us to learn? Because think to yourself, the times in which you and I have been abundant, how much more have we received in return? And it's not about getting the return, is it? It's about doing what Jesus is asking us to do. Because if God gives to us in abundance, then why am I so reluctant to give to others? Why? And when I think about my life, how much more is my life enhanced? Because God has blessed me and blessed me with people to enhance my life. So therefore, I should also give abundantly. You see, God is asking us to be more like him. The more we have the shepherd's heart, the more we think, the more we do, as God is asking us, then the more we become like him. For it is in giving that we receive. If you want to lose your life for my sake, you will find it. But when we hoard, when we become selfish, when we become cheap with God and others, why would we, re why would we expect things to be abundant when we are not abundant with our time, talent, and treasure? So how is God asking each of us to give more abundantly? First and foremost, to Almighty God. Stop checking your watches. Stop filling our days with things that are not important. Let us make sure that we give to God what is His. First and foremost, our time. When we give to God our time, 
we receive in abundance. Then, fed by his word in Eucharist, when we exit these doors today, how are we going to live the abundance with first and foremost an attitude of gratitude to God, but then in service and love of neighbor? Are we going to be selfish like a CC part one, or are we going to be generous like a CC part two? Obviously, the latter is what God is asking us to do. This little example is just a reflection of how in daily lives we can justify our own needs. But God is a God of abundance because in the Scripture, He anticipates the need before it comes. And He delivers on the need before the people even realize there's a problem. So just as we focus on our own need, let us be less like the apostles. Let us be more trusting like Elisha, and let us be more generous like God, so that we too cannot just expect to receive in abundance, but be somebody who is willing to give in abundance. Our God gives in abundance and calls us to be like Him. With gratitude, we profess our faith in Him using the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sin. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us turn to God who gives in abundance, who gives our daily bread and cares for every need. Recognizing our responsibility to bring our needs to God's ears, we do so in confidence as we pray. Our response, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. That the leaders of the church may imitate the generosity of the young boy and share what they possess with the underprivileged. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we may be conscious of our responsibility for the hungry, the neglected, and the less fortunate members of society. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are sick and are faced with pain, suffering, and loneliness, especially Kelly Kovas, Alma Jack, Michelle Williamson, Dennis Jones, Eileen Palmer, Joan McIntosh, Stephen Stewart, James Ree, Doug Robinson, Christine DeLuca, Sean Bernard, Margaret Beauchamp, baby Bianca Carboni. May they be strengthened by the support of their friends. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the dead, especially Michael Marsh, Pat Lawless, Rebecca LaRocque, Maria Martina Mello, Lorette Miles, Gladys Sotomayor, Elsa DeCano. May their hunger for eternal life be satisfied in the presence of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We also pray for Tony Passero and special intention for the Digba family. Let us pray to the Lord. 
Lord, hear our prayer. For all the intentions we bring to God from the silence of our hearts. Heavenly Father, we thank you for listening to us. We trust in your concern for the welfare of your creation. You are a God who gives an abundance, who works miracles in our lives. In thanksgiving for your presence, in gratitude for your abundance, we turn to you and ask that you change our hearts from selfish to abundant ones. We ask these and all things through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this bread which we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life.
By the mingling of this water and wine, we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this wine which we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, that will become for us our spiritual drink. With humble spirit and contrite heart, may we be accepted by you, O Lord. May our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Wash me, O Lord, of my iniquity. Cleanse me of my many sins. Thank you. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the laws of the Church. Amen. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the offerings which we bring from the abundance of your gifts, that through the powerful working of your grace, these most sacred <clears throat> mysteries may sanctify our present way of life and lead us to eternal gladness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father of mercies and faithful God. For you have given us Jesus, your Son, as our Lord and Redeemer. He always showed compassion for children and for the poor for the sick and for sinners. He became a neighbor to the oppressed and the afflicted. By word and deed, he announced to the world that you are our Father and that you care for all your daughters and sons. And so with all the angels and saints, we exalt and bless your holy name and sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. At this Mass, we use Eucharistic prayer for Masses and various needs, number four. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son, Jesus, present in our midst when we are gathered by his love. And when, as once for the disciples, so now for us he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. My Lord and my God, In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. My Jesus' mercy. The mystery of faith.
Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ your Son and our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us, and grant that by the power of the Spirit of your love we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son in whose body and blood we have communion. Bring your church, O Lord, to perfect faith and charity, together with Francis our Pope and Gerard our Bishop, with all bishops, priests, deacons, women religious, and the entire people you have made your own. Open our eyes to the needs of our brothers and sisters. Inspire in us words and actions to comfort those who labor and are heavily burdened. Make us serve them truly after the example of Christ and at his command. And may your church stand as a living witness to truth and freedom, to justice and peace, that all people may be raised up to a new hope. Remember our brothers and sisters, especially Papa and all who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face, O God, and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her husband, with your apostles and martyrs, with the prophet Elisha, with St. Catherine of Alexandria, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sin, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And with your Turn and offer one another a sign of the Lord's peace.
Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, who by the will of the Father and work of the Holy Spirit, through your death gave life to the world, free us by this your most holy body and blood, from all our sins and from all that is evil. Keep us faithful to your commandments, and never let us be parted from you. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. May the blood of Christ bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. I invite those who are receiving Jesus in a spiritual communion to now pray. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. Thank you. 
Let us pray. We have consumed, O Lord, this divine sacrament, the perpetual memorial of the passion of your Son. Grant, we pray, that this gift which he himself gave us with love beyond all telling may profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us turn to our Blessed Mother as we pray. We fly to thy protection, O Holy Mother of God. Despise not our petitions and our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers. O glorious and blessed Virgin, amen. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in the day of battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. Under thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl through the world, seeking the ruin of souls, amen. Good Saint Joseph, ever watchful guardian of the Holy Family, Protect the chosen people of Jesus Christ. Keep us free from the blight of error and corruption and be our ally in the conflict with the powers of darkness. As of old, you rescued the child Jesus from the plots of Herod. So now defend the universal church from all harm. Keep us one and all under your continual protection so that by your help and example, we may lead a holy life, die a happy death, and come to possess eternal life in heaven. Amen. Friends, a few announcements. Number one, Hotel Father Rico continues to be open. So I was asked by another priest to move in uh, due to personal reasons. So Father Michael Basque will be moving into our rectory like Father Joe's. He is not assigned to us, but will be living in residence. Father Michael has been a priest of our diocese for a very long time. You might remember, for those of you diehards who've lived here, for longer than 40 years, Father Michael was the deacon here at St. Joseph's at the beginning of his priestly ministry. So Father Michael is moving in on Thursday. You're going to hear Father Michael before you see Father Michael. He is loud. You think I'm loud? Guess what? I'm not as loud as Father Basque. But I am not as holy as Father Basque either. He's a very, very good priest. And so he will be in residence, he says, for a month. When people give me timelines, I just see them as a suggestion. So we're going to see how long Father Michael needs to live here at Shea St. Joseph's, and uh, I'm going to be putting him to work. So if I send Father Michael to take care of some pastoral needs, he's a legitimate priest, and he'll do a great job too. So I'm sure you will give Father Michael a kind welcome once he moves in on Thursday, as you've done with Father Joe's. Number two, for all you last-minute Jacksons, I've only been promoting it now for three months about our parish barbecue on the 11th of August. Again, my job's to invite you. Your job is to come. So please be abundantly nice to Tracy by handing in your form and your $5 per person. So that way, this week, we can start purchasing the food for the 11th, and we look forward to a great day together. Again, I ask all parishioners be present, and I'm encouraging you, instead of sitting with your family, to go and mingle with the people of our community. What a great chance to get to know one another in a very social way, which is the purpose of the barbecue. My brothers and sisters, the Lord be with you. And May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Let us go in the peace of Christ.